I'll first take this to Tavleen Singh because you talked about in your opening remarks the fact that the weakening of institutions started way back uh, during Indira Gandhi's emergency. Among those who really fought back at that time were the people who are in government today, whose own leaders went to jail, including Mr. Vajpayee, who was Prime Minister. Do you find it ironic that they seem to have learned no lessons from, from what they themselves fought against in, in the 70s? Politicians never do, right? Mr. Chidambaram has been in jail for four months, and I bet you anything that he's never, ever going to do anything to improve conditions in that jail. The politicians never do. That's not the point. The point is that we should have all been aware much earlier <coughs> at the chipping away of the institutions and the, the centralization of power in the prime minister's office, which has been happening for a very long time. What, I mean, Maya calls it an authoritarian democracy. We've actually had a dictatorial democracy in the past, right? And basically, after that, when the Janta Party came in, when these guys who are now in power, they did nothing to improve the strength of those institutions. And frankly, neither did the media. Do you know? So The I mean, media itself is weakened as an institution. The media frankly. at the moment, actually at the moment, um, you know, this is, this is the one of the institutions that is under real attack now, under this, under the Modi point two, two point oh or whatever, is the media. Because uh, I myself, I don't want to go into the details of it, um, have been, uh, have, you know, pressure is being put in various ways. And I think that that is very scary. Farah, you, you raised your hand. Uh, yes, I, I want to yeah. comment on this point about the emergency because it is, uh, it is a valid comparison. Uh, the emergency was indeed possibly the darkest hour of Indian democracy since we were, we were born as a nation. But there are differences and there are very vital differences. Well, one is that the, it was the, the emergency, emergency. Look, the emergency had a start date and it had an end date. It was 21 months of hell. It was a shout out from the ramparts. It was called the emergency. Mrs. Gandhi went about her business as a dictator, filling jails, suspending civil liberties, press freedoms, assemblies, abrogating power to herself. It ended, it had a date. The kind of emergency that we are seeing now, and please understand, the protests you're seeing across India are a response to this slow gnawing away of the institutions that we have seen specifically under this government. You are seeing a rat-like gnawing away of every fundamental that we have held dear. And the role of the guardian of the constitution is deeply worrying. What has the Supreme Court done on 370, on electoral bonds for heaven's sake? We have an opaque system of funding of our great democracy and the CAA. These matters, habeas corpus petitions on Kashmir are not heard. These are matters of a grave crisis. We talk about the separation of state. The judiciary saved us from Mrs. Gandhi's emergency. It did not. It, 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 it ungaved. It yes, yes. It, and the worst no, man but who didn't it, was it, kicked out. In the Minerva Mills judgment in 90, it rolled back. It rolled back the damage that Indira Gandhi had done to that constitution. Today, you are not seeing anybody having faith in the judiciary. I am sorry. How can the Supreme Court say no CAA petitions will be heard by the high courts? We will benefit. Let it be close to the people. Why should all petitions only come here?